hello 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 if you can see me and hear me give me a thumbs up a wave something just let me know you can hear me and you can see me Mia's taking a nap so she's not going to entertain us tonight she created enough havoc earlier <laughs> I'm just saying Hi, Monica. Hi, Barb. Barbara. Angela. Pam. We got quite a group growing here. All right. I just like to make sure that everybody can hear me because there for a while people couldn't hear me and they wasn't saying anything. I don't take offense if you tell me you can't hear me. I will turn the mics up. You can't hear me, but you can see me. <laughs> Hi, Kadia. I thought you had cotton in your ears, Pam. <laughs> All right, Monica. Three of them. That was a typo? Okay. I'll let you slide this time. <laughs> Y'all have to excuse me. I am past the total exhaustion stage. Moving into I'm the walking dead. <laughs> I feel like I'm working three jobs. After we get into the new rig, it'll settle down. I just have to be ready because it'll happen pretty quick once the rig gets here. Maybe like, yeah, come and get it. We go over there and we just unload this one and load up the other one. We're going to get lots of exercise. Yeah, because the doors, the entry doors are on the same side. You know, like the new rig will be parked here and this one will be parked here. And the door to this one's on this side. The door to this one's on this side. So it's going to be ring around the RV as we move stuff. <laughs> but this one's got a gate thing that drops down, makes a patio. I'm hoping ways that we can drop it and he can just go out the back door. If that works, then we're in business. That way we don't have to run around the rig every time. That's 40 foot around. On this one and 44 on the other one so either way that's 80 rounds 84 rounds every time we move a load so we'll be getting some mileage in literally okay we're getting errors babe Dennis Dennis Yeah, but you were getting that before and you were still... No, it's glitching, you see. Uh, yeah, we could park them front to back if they allow it. We don't know. We don't know how they'll have them set up. Check the band mm -hmm. I can check it real quick. Because it's glitching. Y'all, that's my husband. Check the band with Prime time, that's the problem. Yeah, I know. I'll be where is that part? Can you track it? See where it's at? Jupiter, 
you know, is still on Pluto. Download speed's awesome. I mean, we're we're climbing up here. Yeah, but upload is more important. Right? Yeah, we're we're tapping it. We're gonna hit a hundred on the upload or download. Upload. That's a YouTube problem. You seen it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Was, yeah. Not the internet. It says I haven't got enough bit rate. I don't get it. Okay, we're going to do the sit and spin. Uh, I will tell you all this. I just did a test. Okay? And, Dennis, look at this. It's changed. Yeah, but that's still not bad. Okay, we're getting 4.52 megabytes. Upload speed. YouTube says, I'm not putting out enough speed. Now, all of a sudden, I'm excellent, and I'm just a freak show over here. So, we just work around it, okay? All right. Let's see who snuck in that back door. Hi, right, Teresa. Hey. Yeah, the patio is nice. But the thing is, Pam, not all the parks will let you let it down. Okay. You know, it'd be nice, but this thing is 40 foot long, and dragging it around is not a picnic. And the church parking lots, Angela, they have the concrete things, a lot of them. And you can't get this rig around it. You blow tires and everything else. If you ain't careful. Hi, Bev. Hi, Lisa. So, yeah. But that's life as, as it is. Okay? We are not in this thing much longer. When we get into the new rig, he's going to hardwire me. So then we don't have that problem of me making freak shows anymore. Okay? I'm just saying. Exactly, Arlene. Exactly. The thing about this rig is it's got three doors. It's got the patio door. Oh, excuse me. It's got the side garage door, and it's got the front door. So, there you go. The new rig will only have one door. So, and a whole lot of windows. I'm looking forward to that. Hi, Cynthia. So, but, anywho... Earlier today, I sent out a link, and Pam called me and said, that link is bad link. And for some people, it came through as a totally different address, but it had the same link address as the one I sent out the second time. We don't know how it happened. It is a YouTube thing. It is not an us thing. So, and he's saying a lot of this glitching stuff is a YouTube problem. We will find out when we get me hardwired in. If it continues, then I'll be calling YouTube. Your weekend warriors. Awesome! <laughs> you come help us schlep boxes. All right. We really don't have a lot. We unloaded a bunch of stuff into storage, Angela. And what's here in the garage is stuff that we just didn't have room in the storage room for. And also the stuff we use on a day-to-day -day basis. So, yeah, it's just the garage floor that's covered. If you wouldn't get sick, I could flick the camera around, but I'm afraid you'd get perked or sick if I did. Hi, Fred. Hi, Fred. Hi, Fred. I just love Fred's name. Guns and Unicorns. Where she come up with that, I don't know. But it's just so cool. You've had that nickname for a long time. That is my dog, folks. She snores. <laughs> You'll have to overlook her. Hi, Lingo. 
Asia, honey. Baby. Baby doll. Man, she's sawn some logs over here. She's tired. The UPS guy came. That's all I got to say. <laughs> it wore out bargain at him. All right. Let's get to it. Tonight we're going to work on our buttons some more. The Dorset buttons. The um, Earlier today I was not prepared. Hi, Diane. Uh, I was hoping to get the rings in stages so that I could just flip from one to the other. And we had a mishap. I have not changed my legal residency because I don't drive the rig. I don't drive a car or anything. My husband drives it all. And uh, so I didn't think nothing of it. He made the change of address and residency on him, so I figured I was covered, you know. And they called me for jury duty in Kentucky August 30th. Well, as you can see, it's the 21st of September. Well, I called them and she said, I need your driver's license to prove you don't live in Kentucky anymore. Even though the address reflects you don't, you still need to have your proof. So I said, okay, I'm getting it tomorrow. So we made the appointment to go get my license and stuff tomorrow. And I get a letter from the judge saying that he took me off jury duty and everything's kosher. So, yeah, I'm getting my license, going to send it to him, because this is twice that this has happened. And I'm just not going to mess with it no more, so I'm going to just send him my license and get out of trouble. So, I just don't think I'd look good in orange or stripes. Just saying. I don't know what they do here. In Georgia, uh, the people that are in jail do the road work. I don't do road work. I haven't done real road work in a long time. <laughs> I'm just saying. So, on that note, I'm going to go down and we're going to get into this dorset button. So, everybody, look at what I got. I have got some samples here. And I've got it pretty much staged, okay? This one here is what it will look like after you get everything wrapped okay and you see this little ridge here this is what you're going to do your slicking with and slicking is when you take your finger or your fingernail and you roll that ridge to the back of your ring and it is tight so take your time roll it around and get that ridge all tucked in nicely now on some of the dorset buttons, you can take this ridge and put it inside here, inside the uh, circumference of your ring. You can leave it on the outside if you want, but the more traditional dorset button has you to roll this back, and this is called slicking. And what you're doing is basically cleaning up your edges, okay? Just like going out on a date. You're getting slicked up. Alright, so remember that. If you want to make it nice and pretty and look really, really sharp, you want to get it slicked up. Alright? Does everybody understand the term slicking? Hey, Tatiana, we haven't seen you in a forever. Oh my goodness, so glad you're back. Desiree, hey. All right, so does everybody understand slicking? It's rolling that ridge back on the back side. All right. Now, on the next step of this, after you've got it all slicked to the back, you then want to start your work on making your spokes, which this is called, um, let me look at my notes, laying, okay? Me and I call it making spokes, but the correct term is laying. So what you do, let me get it up here so you can see, you lay that thread, you try to get it dead center on both sides of that ring, okay? Right there. 
You see how it divides that ring in half. All right, and then you just bring it up even and round. Now your next one, your next wrap, dog fuzz. Yeah, I got dogs. Cats do the same thing. All right, the next wrap, you want to move it over evenly all the way around as you go. And you continue wrapping. What I try to do is get it right in between two threads. So it locks it in and it looks even. Okay? All right, and we go over here and we do it again. And we just keep this up until we have the number of spokes that we want. A true dorset button has 12 spokes. Okay, like a bicycle spoke. All right, so we go again. And you're always moving clockwise if you're right-handed, counterclockwise if you're left-handed. All right that over here and there all right well let's back it up that didn't turn out too even yeah I'm blind what else is new <laughs> all right there we go and you want to hold it so that it doesn't come undone because once it comes undone it's a pill to get it back all right now we're going to come in we're going to put one more in between like that, and we're going to bring it over here. Okay? Now, the next thing you want to do is you are going to come up from the bottom. And what you want to do is get it to tie in all of this. Hi, Karen. All right. And it takes a while to get these spokes to set right. And if they're not even, pull them off. Work with them some more. All right? Because you want them to look right. Okay? Just keep working them. Because if they don't look right, your button will not look right. You're very welcome, Maria. Welcome to the classes. Glad you're here. By the way, folks, I heard from Miss Georgia today. She's doing well. She was worried that I was having to swim, and she knows I can't swim. She's watching the weather, and she knows about the hurricane, so she worries about me. And I told her we were fine, that I should have had webbed feet when I was born, but it, apparently that wasn't a choice. So, I'm not a duck. <laughs> All right, so here we go. We've got our spokes in, okay? Now what you want to do is come up, line yourself up between the two spokes here, okay? And you're going to come across after you get it without the pin. Tie that in. All right, and you're going to go across and drop it down. All right, after you go that way, turn that ring, and you're going to come up from the bottom here, right there, and you're going to go up and over and down. This will lock the spokes in so you can continue with the next part. All right, let me get it off. Probably getting off screen. If I am, I'm sorry. I'm trying to hold it all. All right. So, to tighten everything up, pull it tight. Pull it tight. Okay. You got that all tightened down, ready to go. Now, you want to go up from the bottom. Okay, and you're going to go over to the left, okay, pull it down. 
you're going to go over two. Okay, so you count the one you just wrapped over and you go over two spaces and come back up. Y'all seeing that? If I lose you, let me know. Now, you're going to go down the other side of that spoke and make sure you get both spokes and pull down. When you pull down, pull it towards the center. Okay? You go up the second one. So you're going, not this loop, but this, and come straight back up. Okay? Now, we're going to go down on the side to the left of that one. And all the while, you are turning this around. Okay? But every time you come in, you pull that down. Okay? Now, go up on the second one and down on the back side of that. Pull it down. And as you go, it gets faster. All right? You want to keep doing that until you wrap up to the top of your ring. Okay? Did I just do what I think I did? I think I did. I think I did. No, I didn't. I got it. I got it. I got it. I got it. Okay. Pull it in. You want to go over two. Back one. All right. Over two. Back one. And you just keep working it, pulling it down into itself. All right? Working it in. All right. Turn it. You go over two, back one. Over two, back one. Y'all getting that? We're going over two, back one. Over two, back one. Okay? And that's how you do it. Sew in your ends in the back and where you're going to sew in at is right along where your spokes are and you're going to go in double back and go back in that will tie it in to where it will stay it won't come out if you're still worried you can put a dab of glue on the back and save it okay now once all this is done it's time to tat on it Okay. Okay, y'all are talking about, um, yeah. What is it called? I can't, it just slipped my mind. Camp One Attack. Yeah, the, at Camp One Attack, they're going to use 14 shuttles to do a pattern. And Teresa Orrin says, what about eight with size three thread? Oh, lordy, lordy, lordy. So, y'all have fun with your 14 shuttles. Okay, back to the lesson. All right, now, once you get here, everything's tied in. You snip your end. All right, it's all cleaned up in the back. This is the back side. Looks like it's woven, but this is where your threads are tied in and all that good fun stuff. Earlier today, someone asked, how do you tie in the ends when you run out of thread? Well, here's what you do. I'm going to get my needle out here. And I'm going to show you using this thread because I have to tie 
this thread on here. Okay? So, here's what we do. We get our needle. All right? Loosen it up. Let me show you how you do this. Now, you're going to come in. You pick a spoke. And you run that right along beside that spoke, about three stitches. Try not to go out beyond the spoke, because it shows on the other side. Okay? Yes, you're going over two spokes, then back one spoke, Desiree. I will show that close again, okay? Now, once you get that thread in there, Take it and come back. It is the same thing. How many of you are crocheters? The shanks for the back of the buttons, Pam, you make. Okay, we're not going to do shanks. You can buy a pin clasp by the bag and stick them on there and make pins out of them, brooches. You can put button uh, beads in here, all kinds of fun stuff. All right, how many of you crochet? If you crochet, when you go to sew in your ends, you're weaving those ends back and forth, right? You're going to do the same thing with this. However, with you coming in next to the spokes, it's very, very tight at that position. So, when you go back up, you'll be able to cut your thread. Okay? So, that answers the question. Okay? How do you tie in your ends? Now, if you run out of thread and you need more thread, you can tie it, these two threads together. It's up to you. It's going to be on the back. Okay, most times you just tie your thread in, just like this, weave it in a couple of times, snip it, and done. Okay, but you're working with two ends. Myself, I like to tie a little square knot and pull it in and just snip it off close. Okay, it's your own. The true dorset button has what they call a small knot, some kind of a small knot. and they use that. Me, I do it like I do when I'm crocheting and then tie it off just a little bit with a square knot. And then it's done. But it, again, if you're worried it'll come out, use a tad bit of glue, okay, and stop that. All right? So that's how you weave those ends back in and lock them down. All right? So now let me get back over here. And I will show you again on this how you go up and over. But I'm going to show you on here with this one first. If I can get this needle to thread. You'd think with an eye that big wouldn't be a problem. Well, apparently it is. So, okay. Watch what I'm doing. Let me get up here underneath this. All right, my thread is coming out the back. Can you see where it's at? It's right here. This is my thread. All right. Let me switch so I can see what you are seeing. Okay. You see my thread. It's right here. This is my thread going down through to the back. All right. Now it's going down that hole. I'm going to go back one, two, okay? Let me turn it around so I'm not going backwards. We go one hole, two hole, back up. Okay, pull it through. Once you get used to this rhythm, it'll be easier. Now you're going back. See, there's our thread going back to the right. Pull it down. As you pull it down, pull it to the center so that you tighten it up. Go over two. So we're going one, two. Okay. Back down the 
on the right side. Okay? And I might get my teeth to work around my tongue here before it's over with. That'll be an amazing feat. All right, now we're going to go one, two. Okay? And over one. This large thread on this small cabone ring does not do it justice, let me say. But that's how it's done. Does it make sense to you now? Do you understand how the stitches work? I'll wait till somebody says, Yay, I know how the stitches work. <clears throat> Hi, Sue. Everybody understand how it goes? Hi, Arlene. Did you slip in on me again, girlfriend? All right, so everybody's got it. Now, we're going to tie this shuttle in on this right here, this button. I'm using the larger button so that you can see how to tat on it. It is really easy. That's right, you move the ring counterclockwise, or yeah, counterclockwise, but you're working clockwise. So you're you're working back this way, but the ring's turning the other way. You got it. Right. You got it, Desiree. You got it. Tatiana, you'll do just fine. I have all the faith in you, my dear. I do. Yeah, Sue, some people got the link. I don't know what happened. The link went out, okay? And it's the same link that we're feeding on right now. Yet, when you hover your mouse over it, it's a different link. And that's straight from YouTube. YouTube's got issues. They don't like us. Just wonder why. They need to. We might have to get our threads and make lace out of them. <laughs> yes, that's right, So You can work either direction. Now, I am pulling this thread up, in case you're wondering. I'm working it in this way, up next to that spoke, okay? Because this is where I am going to start tatting at, all right? You want to pull it over to the spoke. All right. Pull your needle off. Okay. Here we go. Now, it is just like when you're tatting. And if you look, you cannot see on this side where I've threaded that through. Okay. We are having a secret meeting. <laughs> okay, so here we go. You just tie it off. Basically, that is it. You lay it down there and you just tie a shoelace trick and call it a day. All right, that's just to keep it from coming loose. All right, now other people can tat on it different. Me, I'm all about securing it to make sure that it doesn't come loose, that it doesn't show, that this doesn't show, okay? Now, here's what I'm going to do. Let me get my hook, and I am going to reach down through here. I am going to grab that thread and pull it to the front side. 
was only back there to secure. Okay, now run that shuttle through that loop. Try to get that loop not to twist. Okay, see how it's on there. Everybody, y'all just move away. You pulled the loop through here and straight up. Okay, you see it's attached to the ring. Now, we want to start tatting a ring. Okay? Of course, this would be continuous thread method, so you'd have a chain to go with it. Alright? Right now, I'm just showing you how to get started. You want to lock it down on top of that thread and just start tatting your ring. If you see that it's starting to slip or anything's getting jihawed, back it up and correct your spaces. All right? Because it does take some getting used to. Because you've got a lot of stuff you're working around. You're working around the ring. You're working around the thread. You're working around the shuttle. Okay? Now, you can do it with a ring here. If you are doing continuous thread methods, you can do a chain. You can do split rings off of here. You can do whatever your heart's desire at this point. But you have to attach it to the button. Okay? Make sure you add picos where you want picos. All right? But for right now, we're just going to throw in here a ring to show you how you start joining your tatting. Now, back here, as you can see, it's slipped. So, it's, remember, we just tied a shoelace trick back here. Now you know why. We can tighten it up, line up that tatting, okay, pull every, everything into place, and lock it in. You see that? <laughs> Bye, Sue. Thanks for coming. And then you just keep on, okay? Now, you can t take and make a round with your thread that's attached to the button and make little loops here. We can go into that another day, all right? But to get you started, the best way is do it like this. Then you can come back. This is neat, okay? I want to show you guys something. And I've seen this on a video. And I was like, cool beans, you know? Take your thread. And it's like you're weaving. Okay? Back and forth. Well, it helps if you get the eye of the needle and thread it. This, I thought, was so neat. And I seen it on a video. They had the little rings and chains running across. Well, they came back through, okay, underneath. You see the spoke? Came back through and pulled that thread like this. Okay? And they went over the next thread, back under this thread. Then on the next round, it was vice versa. And it was so neat. It gave the neatest look to the outer edge of this ring. And it was different. So, yeah. You can do just about anything you want with these buttons. I'm sorry, babe. I'm sorry I do that. It's because I'm sluggish and I can't see where I'm at. Let me get over here. Alright, there we go. Anyway, you go under the spoke. Okay? You go over it. Have fun with it. Just making the buttons is fun. Uh, I've seen different things that they have done with the buttons that, as far as what they use them for. And I find that fascinating. But to me, 
the ones that Mindy put out, I mean, it's like, whoa. She's got one that's a Christmas tree. And it looks like a Christmas tree. And it's got beads on there that look like Christmas lights. I've seen uh, an angel made out of these. It's got the wings. It's a little small. Well, it's probably a smaller one than this. And it's got the wings. And then it's got another... I don't know what they call it. Sue, what is it that the round uh, buttons, it's not like this. It's three-dimensional. looks like a little cone or something. And that's what they used for the head of the angel. It was all dorset buttons. And dorset buttons are more than just this cartwheel. Okay? There's several different methods to the dorset, dorset button and there's many things you can do with it I seen one that had the tree of life in it and the button was about as big as this okay yes you attach each element but here's how you're going to do it you're going to go down through once you get it locked in then it's going to be pull your thread behind and pull up Okay, just like you're running a Pico. Okay, and you're going to grab your thread. If I can get this thing to do with me, like I need it to. See, and then we pull it up, run our shuttle through. Okay, you saw it. Okay, um, but that's what I say. Um, you can do so many things with this. Really. Can you imagine the tree of life in here? And then they um, put beads in here. Right on the ends of the spokes. So it looked like, you know, little wooden beads. It looked like a little wooden tire. <laughs> but, alright, think of this. Okay. We tat dollies. We tat all kinds of different things. I seen, and some of you remember this, the chariot, the Cinderella chariot that was tatted. Georgia shared it with the class years ago. Yes, but these were these are things I have seen in other places before that video, Fred. Okay, back to the chariot. How many of you saw the chariot that Georgia shared with the class, I'm going to say, six years ago? It was all tatted. Even the wheels on that chariot was tatted. Okay? Now, the problem with that chariot, it wouldn't sit on the wheels because it was so heavy. The wheels was doing this back and forth wobbly. Can you imagine using the dorset buttons for the wheels? Fancying them up a little more, you know, leaving space, making it look, get the lacy look to it. And then that chariot sitting on top of it. Yes, Cinderella's coach. You remember it, Sue? She shared it. I mean, I was drooling all over that thing. I know it had to take that person months to do that. It was beautiful. But can you imagine using these for the wheels for that coach? It would stabilize it. Okay? And then you could use it as a decoration in a girl's room. Little girl's room. You could set it in your china cabinet on a mirror. Oh my gosh. The lights and stuff. Especially if you use metallic threads in it. So, okay, your brains are just going to town, aren't they? But now you know why I wanted you to see how to make the dorset button. So you could utilize it in your tatting. Okay? Because it is stout. It is heavy duty. But it's also delicate. And it will support your tatting in many facets. It's like you're making a basket. 
you need a foundation for that basket to give it strength, there's your foundation. Build from there. Do you see? So give me some ideas what you would do with your Dorset button to implement it in your tatting. Okay? Now, as Sue mentioned, we're trying to incorporate design class with the intermediate advanced class. Okay? My job is to give you ideas to focus on, and she's going to show you how to do that. Okay? Then once you all get the pattern worked out, guess what? We're going to figure out the stitches you need. We're going to figure out the techniques you need. And then we're going to test that pattern. Okay? So it, it, it's an ongoing project. But it will give you insight to design. It will give you insight to creation. Okay? Making it your own. Okay? And that's what we want. We want you to think. We're going to give you more questions than answers because we want you to think your way through. Okay? And the reason for that is so when you run across a difficult situation and you don't have the phone a friend, you'll know how to get through it. Okay? Because there's no wrong answer if you know what you're doing. You can figure it out. Okay? So, do we have any questions for today? I know it's a pretty short class. Okay. All right, you got that. Eye of a Critter, Centers for Snowflakes, Wire Wrap Them to Hair Sticks and Wear Them as Hair Ornaments. You got it, Angela? Think about it. Think what you could use them for. And then you come off of that with tatting. You have just done what they call mixed media. Like it or not, it's mixed media. When you mix one craft subject with another craft in any shape, okay? You can get these little round discs in any shape. You want an oval? Go to Hobby Lobby. Look in the different aisles. If you get these wire bangle looking things, I don't even know what they what they go to. I've had them for like 150,000 years. You can reshape these. Okay? And make them what you want. You can make it an oval. You can make it a triangle. You can just about do whatever you want with them. Okay? You can even, if you're a wire worker, you can make your own shapes. And if you're using sterling silver wire and you've got your torch, you can lock that thing in and it's a solid piece. If you know what you're doing, okay? I'm not saying everybody go out and get wire and get a torch and start burning houses. I'm saying if you're a wire worker and you know how to do it, please be careful using torches. Okay? All right, let me read and see what all I've missed. Yeah, you got that. That That's good. Sue's saying she's wondering, rather than turning the blanket stitch, when making the wraps, put a small pico then after the center worked. Yeah. Sue, I wonder, instead of slicking the knots, if you can make every fifth or sixth looser and use it as a pico to attach tatting. Yes, you could. I'm with you, Tatiana. I've never heard of them before. I love the creativity that comes with them. Indian bracelets. Angela, that could work. Yeah. All right. You all are on a roll here. Now you see why I got addicted to the dorset buttons. Georgia had asked me if I'd ever made one. I said, no. She said, why don't you teach the students? And I did the best. Okay. Mind you, I've only been at it for about a week and a half. Two weeks max. And during that time, I've been packing and moving. So I've practiced very little. 
but it's that easy. Anything that easy can give you opportunities abundant. Okay? No, it won't loosen the stitches, Pam, because the other ones, as you're rolling them back, you're slicking them, they tighten up. Remember, the inside circumference is smaller than the outside di diameter. Okay? So when you roll that stitch over, you are tightening it. As you're slicking it, you're tightening the stitches. From Golden Hands Part Works, Michael, Marshall Cavendish. Yeah, I need glasses, I think. I'm getting blind. Actually, I think it's all these lights. They're bothering my eyes tonight. Yeah, winter's coming. It's 843 and it's pitch dark outside and I'm in Florida. What's that tell you? All right, folks. Do we have any questions on the dorset button? Now, I want you all to play with it. There is no homework. I just want you to play with the dorset button. If you have questions, send the questions to the online tatting class at gmail.com. I will respond. Just give me a little time. Tomorrow I'll be at the DMV getting my license and my voter registration so I don't go get stripes. And then when I come back, I'll be helping Sue get her class set up. Yeah, the lights need turning down, but if I turn them down, then the camera does this. It doesn't like it. And it's because I've got the happy jacks and everything put together, so it's real dark back here. Exactly, Bernice. Exactly. I have some silk threads that my fingers are itching to make dorset buttons out of because there's not enough of the silk threads to tap with. But I know there's enough to make a button with. Can you imagine? Beautiful colors, too. Yeah, it's not enough tightening. And that, Angela, takes practice. You should have seen my first dorset button. It was a floppy Jane, let me tell you. You're not. You have to pull it. And when you pull that loop, okay, when you do your down in between to tie it in, you want to pull it to the center and pull, give it a good tug. Not enough to break the thread, but enough to pull it in tight. Does that make sense to you, Angela? Right, right, Sue. So redirect, not reduce. So, did y'all have fun with the Dorset button classes? Sorry, I wasn't prepared this morning. Y'all have to excuse me. I promise I'll get with it one of these days. I'm, I cut off all the blonde hair. We're down to the gray. I'm thinking it's thinking it's blonde. So, we have to retrain it. You're not going to break it because the rib is a double layer. Okay, if you've got the top rib, see what I'm doing? If you've got that top rib and that bottom rib together, that's doubled. It's going to be hard to break it. It's pretty stout. You're welcome, Arlene. Right, so you want to use that fingernail? I used mine on this one. And what I did is, after I got it, I went around and took my finger and put it at the top and just kept pulling all the way around, okay? And it just laid those stitches right into place. Now, mind you, my center's not perfect, but it did tighten up the stitches. I know, Fred. We, we just have fun. My middle name is fun. That's what I tell everybody. Desiree, I am so thankful you enjoyed the classes. That's our goal, is to have fun, ha make laughter, and make lace. Okay? That's what we want to do. By the way, Georgia says hello to everyone. 
She has a new computer, guys, so she can get back online. Only thing is, she says it's full of passwords, and she doesn't like it because she can't use the same password. So, wish her luck on those passwords, because we all been there, haven't we? Yeah, that's exactly right, Sue. Yeah, y'all hit that like button. Uh, now, I have to go through my spill for those that watch us on YouTube after class. For those of you that are not members of our classes and are not enrolled in our classes, you need to hit that subscribe button, that notification bell, and that like button if this is valuable content to you. Uh, please contact us at the online tatting class and enroll for the classes. There you will got, get information and, you know, all kinds of fun things to do. You'll meet some of the most famous tatters around and just enjoy the camaraderie. You'll be able to join our Facebook group, which is private and only set out for the classes. So make sure you subscribe, hit the notification bell, and hit that like button so we build our ag algorithms. If you feel like you want to donate to offset the cost of these classes, you can donate by using Super Stickers, Super Chats, or Super Thanks. You do not have to donate to attend the classes, and you do not have to pay. They are free, and they will remain free. So, on that note, I wish all your threads make beautiful lace and happy tatting. Y'all have a good night, and I will see you next week. If you don't have any more questions, I'm gone for the night. If you do have questions, send me an email. Until next time, happy tatting. Bye-bye.